I have another flashlight review for you today. It is the Lumen Top EDC 15. If you're interested in hearing more about this light, keep watching. Just before we get started, I'd like to thank the company Flashlight Brand for sending me this light so that I could share it with you. And as always, we'll go down to the tabletop. I'll go over the key features for this light. I'll go over its physical and performance specifications. I'll go over its modes of operation, and then we'll do some testing. Just before we take a closer look at the Lumen Top EDC, EDC 15. I thought I'd share with you what came with it. This is the box that the flashlight showed up in. Inside the box is the manual and warranty information. There is a small rubberized or silicone diffuser, which I'll demonstrate in a few moments' time. There is a pair of spare o rings for it, and there is a small carabiner that you can attach to uh, your light so that you can then attach it to your keychain if you want. Let me put those aside. There's one more thing that came with this light. And that is this business card from Flashlight Brand. And they've asked that I would share this with you, as well as the information on the back, which is a $10 cash back for anyone who, or 10% cash back for anyone who leaves reviews on their Instagram account. Now, what note is what did not come with this flashlight, and that is a battery or battery charger. And the reason is, is because this can use either a regular AA alkaline battery or the rechargeable 14500 battery. And I happen to have a few of these in my collection that I was able to do this uh, video with, so that's what I'll be using. All right, so what are the key features for this light? Well, it's a very, very simple operation. It's just a twist on and off, and that's not unusual for small lights of this size. So with one hand, you can just rotate the basil and it will turn the light on and off. And uh, that's the other feature, of course, is the fact that you can use AA batteries as well as rechargeable batteries in this light. To access the battery, you just undo the body. The battery is there. Replace it. Put it back on. That's where the O-rings are as well. And I guess that would be why there is spare O-rings if you're going to be replacing the battery very often. All right, let's do the physical dimensions for this light. So the overall length is 2.7 inches, which is 68 millimeters. The diameter is 0.73 inches, which is 18.5 millimeters. And the weight of the light with the battery is 1.3 ounces, which is 37 grams. So I will give you the performance specifications for this light using both the 14500 rechargeable battery as well as the AA alkaline battery. So with the 14500, it has a low setting of 8 lumens, which will last for 50 hours. It has a medium setting of 130 lumens, lasting for 4 hours and 10 minutes. It has a high setting of 450 lumens, lasting for 58 minutes, and a turbo of a very respectable for its size 760 lumens, which will last for five minutes before it drops down to one hour and five minutes. And it does have a strobe of 450 lumens. Now, if you're using the alkaline batteries, obviously the output is much lower, but still respectable. On low, two lumens lasting for 65 hours. That's for most alkaline batteries. I think that would be the average. It has a medium of 20 lumens lasting nine hours and 37 minutes. It has a high of 150 lumens lasting for 50 minutes. And it has a turbo of 280 lumens lasting for 20 minutes. It does also have the strobe, as I mentioned, of this time 150 lumens. Now the distance on, uh, using this light would be about 70 meters on turbo with the 14500 uh, battery installed. It does have an impact resistance of I or 1.5 meters and an intrusion protection of IP68. All right, the operation of the Lumen Top EDC 15 is very simple. It's just a matter of turning the basal of the light a little bit to the left. For me, I have it set so that I can grab it with my thumb and forefinger and give it a slight turn, about a quarter turn to the left. It'll turn the light on. Now, I will point out now that when you use it this way, whatever the last lumen setting was before you turn the light off, it will come back on at the next lumen setting higher. So it doesn't have a memory for the last setting but it will pick up where you left off and run through the cycle of low, medium, high, and turbo. Reach and strobe is just a little bit more than that, but let's turn it on. I'm not even sure where it was last time. And you can see there's low, medium, high, turbo, low, medium, 
high and oh, well, there we go. I ran through the cycle a little bit too quickly there. Now, accessing turbo is a little bit inconsistent. It says to do make the uh, turn on six times. Let's see if I can make this work. One, two, there we go. Okay, there is the uh, strobe. Having gone over the key features as well as the physical and performance specifications and the modes of operation for the Lumentop EDC 15. Let's do a little testing. All right, so I'm doing some nighttime testing of the Lumentop EDC 15. I'm outside of my home. I'm standing next to my house, probably about 15 feet away, so I can show you some of the uh, pattern of the light. So let's turn it on. So that is on low, medium, high, and turbo. So you can see it is all flood. It's uh, at, even at 15 feet, I probably have 20 feet spread. At, and so it's an all floodlight, no central hotspot, no uh, spot at all or floods or spotlight at all. So I'm going to redirect the camera into my backyard to see what kind of penetration it gets into the yard. And as you can see, not a lot. It's it illuminates the back of my yard some 60 feet away, but not clear enough that I can see what's back there. And one more demonstration for the Lumentop EDC 15. I put the diffuser on so that you can see what it's like. It, uh, it's a nice light maybe using a tent, not at this intensity. Uh, certainly people would be able to see me as I walk around with this light on. It, uh, it still gives me light at my feet so I can see where I'm going, but it, it's bright. It is uh, still very bright. Now, if I turn this off, I don't know if the green will show up on camera. I'll walk towards the camera so you can see it uh, illuminates green once it's turned off. All right, I think it's time now we can do some pros and cons for the Lumentop EDC 15 before we close this video out. And just before we do that, I thought I would share with you another flashlight in for size comparison, and that is the Lumentop Frog. This one has the extended tube on it and the 10 for 40 rechargeable battery inside. And as you can see, they're pretty close in size. The EDC 15 is still a little bit bigger, both in the length as well as in diameter. They are different also in the way Way they operate as well as their performance, but they're close enough that this is something worth looking at if you wanted to uh, see if the one, which one would be an option for you. Uh, if you're interested, I'll link the video to the EDC or to the Frog at the end of this one, and you can look at that review. So, what is it I do like about the EDC 15? Number one, it's compact size. It's not quite as small as the Frog, but it has a larger, more capable battery in it when you're using the 14500 rechargeable or the more readily available AA battery. Either way, I think that makes it gives it some real benefit over the other. Now, it's not a thrower. It's not a spotlight by any means. It's all about the flood, but for the role of what you're using this light for, which is everyday carry, see around the house, see around the inside of your car, see around your driveway, this is going to operate just fine. I think it fulfills that mission very well. It may be a little bit big to put on a keychain for some people. For me, I'll probably just throw this in my pocket and really pretty much forget that it is there. So it's just a nice simple operation. The knurling on the sides of it, not aggressive, but obviously something that's very easy to hold onto, as well as the extra fine knurling on the basil makes it easy to grip for turning it on and off. So those are the things I like about it. What do I not like about it? There's not much really, and these things are just kind of relative and something you get used to. So the fact that you operate this with the basil, by in my case, the thumb and forefinger, um, operates easily enough it just can be a little bit annoying not knowing what lumen setting it's going to come on at. As I mentioned, whatever the last lumen setting you had it on at before turning it off, it'll come on at the next level higher. And it's just the way it rotates through the cycle of low, medium, high, and turbo. Getting to the strobe is more of a, a challenge, you might say. I'm never quite sure how many times I have to turn it or have I turned it off enough before the strobe come off. To be honest, strobe is not something I'm likely to use unless it's some type of a signaling device in an emergency. That'd be about the only time I would use strobe on this light. So is it a real bad con? Not really. It's more of a something to be aware of. It does not diminish the value of this light in any way. I quite like this light. 
Okay, I think I've said enough about it. I want to thank, again, thank Flashlight Brand for sending this light to me so that I could share it with you. What I will do, as always, is put all the information I have about the light itself and where you can purchase it in the video description below. If you have any questions about this light or any comments, put them in the comments section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled. Bye for now.